Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and today I'm going to share with you another fountain pen. This is the Schaefer Icon, a new Schaefer. Now, it's not all new. There are some things about this pen that are familiar. There are some that are just kind of classic Schaefer, but it's a pretty neat pen, and I'm going to share with you what I like, what I don't like, and, of course, how does the pen actually write. So let's flip that camera and dive right in. All right, when your Schaefer Icon arrives, it comes in a box that I think is really nice, and especially if you're going to give this as a gift. Uh, cardboard sleeve with your model identification information and your Made in China sticker, like everything else it seems these days. And then this nice red and black box with the... Uh, most current Schaefer font and established 1913 and that iconic dot. Always like the white dot. Simple, but you know what you're getting. So packaged well, ships well, and it comes in a really nice padded uh, box, which tilts up. Let's do that first. Tilts up and reveals your care and warranty book as would be standard. And two, not one, but two ink cartridges. And what I like that they did, just one of those little things, it's bonus points, but only a couple of bonus points, is that they included two different colors. It's just black and blue, but still two colors of ink cartridges. I think that's a good idea. Maybe more pen makers that include cartridges might want to give a little bit of variety, maybe put in a and a color that they would like you to, to buy as a promotional thing. That's That would be kind of a cool idea if any pen maker out there is looking for a way to sell more ink. Do a little sample in there. So anyway, the pen comes in good shape. That's the point. And a reminder, lifetime mechanical warranty. So that is always nice. You don't get that on everything. Very nice finish. This green, uh, if you can see, there's metal flakes within that lacquer. This is a brass pen, by the way, and so it has that brass heft to it. It's it's a bigger pen than you might think uh, when you get it. Not an overly long pen. We'll do a size comparison here in a minute, but it has a good diameter and a nice heft to it. It's, it's a good substantial uh, little pen. So anyway, that nice uh, green lacquer with its metal flake, as you turn that, you can see that just a little bit better. And of course, the green painted bands, very simple, two bands, no uh, ornamentation, no labels or logos there, just very simple. A matching green painted line. Uh, this would be, if you get the black and red, that would be red um, and a few other colors as well. But I liked this, this green. And then of course, the white dot. The clip is a, a very springy clip, not overly tight, but good and secure in the pocket. Uh, I've carried this in a shirt pocket quite a bit, and uh, that's a, a good, easy clip in and out of that pocket. As you can see, it's spring steel that is then riveted in the top of the cap and comes back around, and that's where you'll see, actually on the outside of the pen, the only time you'll see the word Schaefer, and it is just engraved in the metal on the opposite side of the clip. Very, very simple, nothing garish at all. I really like the look of the pen overall, and I, I like this, this green color. So does my wife, so this pen may be yet another pen stolen. I don't know, <laughs> but a uh, really nice color. Open the cap up, and it does. Let's take care of that right quick. It posts very well and securely. I've written quite a bit with this pen posted, and I like the balance of the pen. It, it is not crazy back-weighted, although it is also long enough that you can write with the pen unposted. And then it's, of course, lighter and uh, even better balanced and just a, a very easy pen to write with either way. Now, while I have that cap, let's look down in there. I think I've got enough lighting today that you can see that plastic sleeve, which does an okay job. I did... And of course, this is always a function of sleeve, uh, humidity, and everything else. But I did have one time, and only one time, where the pen did dry out after a few days. I don't know. It was one time. You know, once is a is a situation, and and three times is a pattern. So I don't know. But uh, I did have that one time where it did dry out just a little bit, just in the interest of full disclosure and giving you all the information that you might need. 
And of course, it does have that hooded nib. Some of you will recognize this grip section. It's not identical, but it is similar to it's the Schaefer Tyrannus, which I don't think it's surprising that a company would have uh, some identifiable company-wide characteristics and similarities to other models, and that is the case here, but it's not identical. Where that has an inset Schaefer name in kind of a chromed insert, this has this same matching green lacquer down the center of the uh, section with the black Schaefer name there. Nice and subtle. It does make for an easy way to know whether or not you have that uh, semi-hooded, I would call it, semi-hooded nib aligned properly when you go to write. And that's that's helpful. You know, older vintage pens and some heroes now have the little metal insert arrow that helps you align it. And this has that more subtle body-colored lacquer on the plastic section to help you know. Okay, I've got that lined up well. And like I said, with a hooded or semi-hooded nib, that can be helpful. And speaking of that nib. So that probably is the same tubular nib. Again, you know, companies are going to use the same nibs across their pens pretty often. And this is that. This is a medium, but I'm going to tell you, and you'll see it in the writing sample, I would consider this by tipping material, by the narrowness of the writing point, and by its performance, I would actually consider it a Western fine. I don't know what the fine is like. It may be like an extra fine, uh, or it may be like a lobby where your medium and your fines write sometimes very closely, but I would say medium fine fine is the actual functional working of this nib. And then we take off that barrel, again with plastic threads, and uh, some of you will want to know, yeah, it's plastic threads on a metal uh, feed section cartridge sleeve here. And uh, so there will be, you know, possible wear on those plastic threads. So be careful as you're putting this uh, back on not to cross those threads or anything and, and take care of that. But yes, it is plastic threads inside the metal barrel. And then... It does come with, it does come with a converter. Good job, Schaefer. This is actually really important to me because Schaefer converters tend to be uh, pricier than some other companies' converters. Uh, for example, you know, I, I can get Lamy converters for about five bucks, but you're not getting a Schaefer converter, I don't think, very often for anywhere near that. So the fact that this is included, I do really appreciate, and it seems to be a pretty good quality converter. So that is, of course, a nice touch. Coming back out to the outside, I forgot to mention this. Uh, the design of that clip, you'll notice that's a little bit of a, a short clip where a lot of pens that would come to probably about here. This is just a little bit shorter, and it reminds me of some vintage pens like this Esterbrook, uh, where they have kind of a shorter clip, of course, shorter on the Esterbrook. So there are some classic cues to this pen, even though this is a new model with a new design. So a little bit of blending of, of classic and modern. Now let's do a size comparison and then get into our writing test. There is the Schaefer Icon. Here is another metal pen that many of you are familiar with, and that is the Pilot Metropolitan. Similar in size, the Metropolitan, of course, uh, a lighter pen. Another metal pen that is very similar, actually, in price would be the Lamy Studio, and sometimes around, this is the holiday time I'm recording this, and you can get sales on this pen that bring it down a few bucks into Schaefer Icon territory, so that would be something you might cross shop, something you probably aren't cross shopping, but that you might also be interested in, of course, the Diplomat Arrow, a, a, a bigger pen than the Icon in just about every way, and of course, just for size sake, the ubiquitous Lamy Safari, which is longer but similar in diameter and, of course, about half a sheep lighter. So there you go. Let's write with this pen. All right. So we have today the Schaefer Icon. And it is... A medium pen, but, but I'm going to say to fine, and I'm going to put it more to the fine side. I, th I think it writes more like 
a Western find that it does a medium. And in fact, uh, many of my wing songs and gin house with similar nibs write broader, even though they are fines. So, and some of those are even uh, extra fines that write very similarly to this. So that's where I'm going to put that. And this is Waterman's Serenity Blue. Nice ink. Let's just go ahead and do a wetness test while we're talking ink. And so not, you know, on the dry side a little bit, but not overly dry at all. Drier for a medium. Again, that looks like wetness for a fine, doesn't it? Now, don't expect any kind of variation because you're really not going to get that. It's kind of a nail. And, and that's expected from this sort of a, uh, a nib. I will say that uh, I find it's a fairly smooth nib. No roughness, no uh, no catching on paper fibers of any sort. I mean, I've written with cheap copy paper and this paper, uh, art paper, several different kinds of, of paper, different grades. And it's written fine on all of them. It does have just a little bit of, it's not enough I would call it drag, but it's not buttery smooth. There's no no hangnails or anything like that. Uh, let's do the... Uh, the, the gibberish quick writing does the ink catch up and keep up and all that good stuff. And yes, no, see there, no issues there. And like I say, no roughness, no, no dragging, just a, a little, a little something. I don't know, not even toothiness. It's not that much. There's just something there. I have smoother, smoother nibs. I would, I would call it middle of the road. Okay. Middle of the road. Um, uh, not anything, just smooth, certainly not the smoothest ever, nothing rough. Uh, you get the idea? I'm, I, I'm, I can't words today, as my daughter likes to say. I just can't words. But you, I think you know what I'm getting at. I say none of that to say that it's uh, negative. I think it writes nicely. I enjoy writing with this pen. And so there's just a difficult for me to describe today something that I feel there uh, at times. And it may just be something that's characteristic of, of their nibs like this, and, you know, fairly smooth. So let's, uh, let's talk about what I like and what I don't like. If there was a, let's handle the don't likes first because it's a very short list today. Uh, maybe the only thing would be that that sharp edge at the bottom of the cap. And um, yeah, I, I think that's about it. I find it to be a well-balanced pen. Um, I, I like the feel of it. It's got heft. It's not an overly light pen. If you have some of these other hooded nibbed pens from say Wingsung or Jin Hao or others, and uh, maybe they're a little bit too light. A lot of those are pretty light pens, plastic pens. This has a more weighted feel, and it's nicely weighted because uh, posted, it's not uh, imbalanced to the cap or anything like that. You feel it, but it's not imbalanced. It rests nicely in the hand because of the length of the pen. Uh, unposted, it's long enough to write with for most people and uh, comfortable that way, very well balanced that way in hand. I, I, I find all the, the ergonomics of the pen to be quite good. There's no, even though there is a trim here, there's no, uh, no real step down there. You can hold this if you want to hold it low or high. You can do either one, and it's a long enough grip section that you get quite a lot of variety on how you might hold this pen and differences in, in diameter as well. And, you know, that affects how you write. So I like it when a pen has a longer section and gives you options. I like it when the section and the barrel are similar enough in diameter that it gives you those options extended a bit. And this pen has all of that. So ergonomically, I really like the pen. The finish, I hope it's really durable. I really can't say because it's a fairly new pen because I do like this green finish 
with those metal flakes. I think the black pen with the red trim also is striking, and that was kind of a, a hard choice between the two, but I decided to go with the road that I perceived might be less traveled, and of course, you know, blues and greens. I'm still James, right? So that was going to happen. I, being, I, th I think that was probably just going to happen anyway. Value. Let's talk value for a second. Uh, it gets into a little bit of studio territory in that mid-range pen. Uh, there are a lot of pens, a lot of competition. Uh, a lot of the pens in that price range, it's often said by a lot of people, aren't really standout. I think the studio for me is probably the standout pen in that class because it, it just brings something style-wise uh, and, and nib-wise that I really do like. But if you don't like that metal section, then maybe this is a better alternative for you. And if you're into hooded and semi-hooded nibs, maybe this is a better alternative for you. The only thing, I, other thing I would say is be aware that that medium nib is going to write on the thin side. And uh, if you're into mediums because you don't want a fine, thinner line, then then it might be just a little bit of thin for you. Uh, now use a wetter, I would say use a wetter ink than this, and that will make up a little bit for that line width. But yeah, I like the pen overall, and I, I'm, I'm glad to have added this Schaefer to my collection, which was a little Schaefer thin, even though it's a pen company that, uh, that I've liked in the past. So good to go. All right. God bless you. Have a great week. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you found value in this video. And in the comments below, which pen? Let's ask this question. Which of these two pens, if money is the same and you find them both on sale at the same price, which of these two great metal pens from uh, long-standing pen makers would you choose?